All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we have the first impressions of the 2021 iMac. So a little bit of background on this. We have invested in quality, is what we call it. So Finn Melanson, you guys met him in a couple videos, has the Single Track Podcast, which is a podcast all about ultra running and every facet behind it. If you haven't checked that out already, I will be sure to link it in the description below. But Finn needed a new computer. Not just that, but he wanted to be able to edit all of his sound. And this is exactly what he needed. He wanted a desktop with a larger screen, a really high quality display, and with enough power to make sure that it's easy to do so. And let me tell you, when I heard we were getting the 2021 iMac here, it's my creative, I was ecstatic. Okay, so first impressions, let's get to it. So when we opened the box, it was really, really simple. You get this really big power brick with a gorgeously braided cable, by the way, that does plug directly into the back of the machine. I mean, that's all your power. And not just that, but the power block also has an ethernet port. So if you would like to hardwire your connection, there you go, you can do that. Actually, really nice thought by Apple. You get your magic keyboard, which yes, is the updated one. No more butterfly switches, thank God. And you also get that magic mouse, which I'm gonna be honest is pretty garbage, actually. I mean, literally any other mouse does better than this. It feels too minimal, in my opinion, and also just like, I, I couldn't figure out how to even right click on this stupid thing. Anyways. And then there was the actual machine. So there were some design changes by Apple, definitely from this model to the previous iMac. They thinned out the bezels just a little bit, and it's no longer a black border around the screen either. They have all their models, whether, what, whether you get the blue or the orange or whatever color you get, it all has a white bezel. The idea of this was to kind of blend into the background. Most walls are white. As you can see in my house, most of them are white. So it's kind of an immersive display and you don't really notice the black bezels as much as you did on the previous model. This comes with a 4.5K display. I think when we took it out of the package, I got about an inch away from that display just to see if I could point out some pixels. And you could when you're that close, but when you're far away, this thing is super sharp. When you look at the display, the colors are super vibrant, as you can see right here. The color accuracy is amazing. One of my favorite things to do on my MacBook Pro when I'm editing photos is going into Lightroom because of how much the color really pops and how much more accurate it is than my desktop tower built PC. Apple does not sell you short on their display technology. Another thing that I love about this is how impossibly thin it is. I mean, it's so impossibly thin that they put the headphone jack on the side of the computer to go in sideways because it can't go in from the front and it's not thick enough to go in from the back. That's what she said. They wanted to make that super thin and light design like they've been doing for the past five, 10 years with the MacBook Pros. And they definitely delivered. I mean, this thing is impossibly thin. So thin actually that I put my iPhone next to it and my iPhone was only about a millimeter thinner I mean, they really put a lot of cool technology into this to keep that power while maintaining that super thin design. Speaking of the thin design, that big old chin is still there. The only difference is they moved the Apple logo from the very front of it to just the back to give you more of that minimal design. And that chin is still there for a couple reasons. Number one, they don't really have the technology to keep it this thin and not also have the entire logic board placed somewhere in there. While I would personally prefer a thicker computer with a logic board behind the screen to get more screen real estate, I understand why they did this. They put that M1 logic board all in the chin of the computer so the rest of it could be the display. So not only was it the thinness of this, the design and the display that really impressed me, but one of my favorite things about this is actually the downward firing speakers that are in the chin of this machine. One of my favorite songs that I use to test speakers out is Say Nada by Shaka. Uh, you know, just FYI, I'll also link that in the description. It's a banger but it has so much dynamic range when it comes to sound. I mean, the trebles, the lows, the highs, I mean, everything really comes into play within that song. And when I put it on full blast on this machine, it actually filled up the entire room that I was in. I mean, it actually sounded like a legitimate speaker. I mean, obviously not as good as like my LG sound bar would be because this is downward small firing speakers from a computer that's paper thin, but ultimately significantly better than I was anticipating. And I do think that these are a huge step up from the previous model when it comes to speakers. So what's left to do on this? While we have the first impressions now done, I would really like to test this thing's capability and its power. This is the first M1 device that we've had in house and my inner tech nerd is just stoked to give it a shot. We're gonna download the Adobe suite. We're gonna test Premiere Pro. We're gonna test Photoshop. We're gonna test Lightroom. And we're gonna test everything that we possibly can to get the real performance of this computer. And we'll be making another video all dedicated to that. So you can check it out and see if it's worth it for you. Either way, guys, thanks so much for checking back into this first impressions video. The power video of this machine will also be coming up very soon. Once we move, we only have a couple days left in this house. Uh, but after that, we'll really be able to get this thing to good use. And hey, make sure you subscribe to Finn's podcast. It's called The Single Track. And like I said at the beginning, I'll link those in the description below. It's a really great podcast if you enjoy running or just like being active or even enjoy the outdoors. 
with a lot of really cool perspectives of a lot of people who have a huge impact on the sport that maybe you don't know much about. Check it out, open yourself up to something new, and you know, who knows, maybe we'll see you out there on the trail. Either way, guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like this video. Definitely subscribe as well. Leave us a comment down below too. Have you used this iMac? Do you want this iMac? It looks pretty sweet, and I'm really excited to try it out. Either way, we'll be catching you guys in the next one. See ya. Love, oh, oh, just say you want me.